Welcome to the Inner Peace and Other Cool Shit podcast, the show that helps you find freedom from anxiety, overthinking, worry, and stress. I'm Siobhan Friel, a fellow human being, transformational coach, and your new friend. Come and hang out with me as we explore a whole new understanding of the human experience so you can enjoy life with more peace and ease. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me again on the show. I'm really excited about the topic today because it's the very thing at the heart of experiencing more inner peace and other cool shit. It's the thing that sparks real lasting change. It's the thing that transforms our life effortlessly. It's the thing that annoying managers would say really moves the needle. (laughs) That phrase really bugs me for reasons I don't know, (laughs) but I'll throw it in in case we have any annoying managers among the listenership. Are you like, what, 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 what is it? Where can I get it? How much is it? Do you do overnight delivery? (laughs) Well, it's completely free for a start. And I don't know where it is, sorry. But I do know that you have the innate capacity to experience it for yourself and you already have done approximately a trillion times. As for delivery, it could show up in five minutes or in 18 years or at any point in between. This awesome thing is what I'm going to be calling insight and that's what we're talking about today. You may know insight by other names like uh, epiphany or light bulb moment or realization or aha moment or new perception, a fresh perspective, when something clicks, clarity, new understanding. I also call them mind blowing or mind melting moments because the really awesome ones just knock your block off. But I'll be mostly using the word insight in this episode to describe everything I just said. (laughs) And I like that because it's in sight, like a sight from within. I think it's kind of cool. So simply speaking, insight is fresh thought. It's a brand new experience of a thought. It could be a thought that you've thought before, but lands with you in a deeper way, or an entirely fresh newborn thought that has never been thought before. Insight is the experience of seeing something in a completely different way. It's the experience of having a new understanding about what the hell is going on. It's recognition of new connections across existing knowledge, as quoted by an insight researcher that I found on the internet, and I quite like that. Recognition of new connections across existing knowledge. You know when some people say, nothing changed but everything is different, that's because of insight. A very simple example of insight is that, oh, moment, when you get the answer on a crossword puzzle or some kind of quiz or game or something that up until then you just didn't know what it was and then it suddenly occurred to you. Another example of insight at work is um, you being at home at night and you see an intruder in the hall. I had an actual similar experience to this the other week, actually. So your heart starts racing and you may start sweating and you start imagining your body lying bloody and bruised on the floor while the intruder ransacks your house and possibly kidnaps your cat. Maybe you pick up one of those enormous golf umbrellas to arm yourself against the inevitable confrontation. But then you realise that the intruder is just the shadow of a coat rack. In that moment of realisation, everything shifted for you. It's an extreme but quite common example that shows us the power of thought. There was never an actual danger, but you thought there was and your body responded accordingly. And this is exactly how I felt the other week when this happened. Like I felt what I was thinking about. I felt the fear of an intruder because that's what I thought was happening. But then another thought, a realisation and what I'm calling insight here comes in and then the experience completely changes. So when this happened to me, nothing in the outside world had changed at all during this like 10 seconds or whatever. 
but I had two enormously different experiences. One from when I thought that um, there was an intruder in the house and the other when I realised it was a coat rack. <laughs> I'm fine, by the way. Can you see how incredibly, tremendously, ridiculously powerful thoughts are? And can you also maybe see how this relates to our experience of stress and anxiety and worry? Our bodies respond to the thoughts we are having, maybe through uh, rapid breathing or increased heart rate or sweating or fidgeting or anything like that. Our body doesn't know what's going on in the outside world. It takes all of its information from what we are thinking. So if we are thinking there's a danger, if life appears to be something to be stressed or anxious about, we're going to feel that. But we are feeling thought. Can you kind of get a feel for what I'm saying here? Anyway, it's pretty powerful when we can see that. Anyway, back to insight. So insight is not always a mind-blowing experience and it can be really subtle. A simple example of insight is me starting the outline to this episode yesterday, right? But I was a bit pushed for time and I felt a bit rushed and bothered. And my insight was, you can do this tomorrow. And I was like, oh, yes, I can actually. Nothing had changed in the outside world, but I went from feeling a bit overwhelmed and a bit frazzled to calm and cool just from my thoughts. By the way, if we've got any procrastinators listening, you're probably thinking, how is that an insight? I'm always thinking I can do stuff tomorrow and that's the problem. (laughs) And I love that. I'm going to talk about procrastination in a future show because I just love that topic and it really looked like a massive problem for me ever since I was born eight days past my due date over 35 years ago, literally procrastinating my own birth. Anyway, my simple insight, which was, I can do this tomorrow, was a fresh realisation to me. It wasn't the habitual thoughts that come with procrastination and other habits. But I don't want you to worry about any of that or the words that I'm using or the specifics of what I'm saying. We don't want to be getting into our mind and trying to sort and label what's an insight and what's a habitual thought and what's this and what's that doesn't matter. It's all just labels that us humans use to try and make sense of things. But all of that categorizing and taxonomizing, is that a word? Um, Keeps us stuck in the sorting and the labeling rather than looking toward the nature of how it all works. If you've listened to the other episodes so far, and if you haven't, why the hell not? you'll hopefully be seeing by now that we don't really want to be going in and messing with the content of our thinking because it doesn't actually matter all that much. Uh, So basically just forget everything I just said about the procrastination thing and my insight not being habitual thought, okay? (laughs) So I just wanted you to get a feel for what I'm referring to when I say insight before I carry on. Because even though us humans are having insight all the time, we may not even recognise it for what it is. Okay, well, let's take a look at why we're even talking about insight. Why did I say it was so awesome at the beginning? How was it helpful? What does it do? How does it change our lives? How is it the transformational catalyst that I said? (laughs) How does it help the overthinkers and worriers among us? How does it help our experience of stress and overwhelm? Like, what cool shit does insight actually do? Well, it looks to me in my own experience and those of the clients that I've worked with that the insight path to freedom, I guess, uh, freedom from worrying and overthinking, stress and anxiety and all those things, it goes a bit like this. We get curious and kind of open. We consider that possibly, maybe, perhaps the way we think the human experience works is wrong. So we start to become a bit more open to the notion that thoughts aren't that important after all. Perhaps they aren't the personal messages or facts to live our lives by or instructions to be followed that we formerly thought. Maybe we get curious about the function of feelings and how they're very, 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 very simple. Possibly, are they? Maybe. And they're just a little alert to when we're innocently and mistakenly believing a bunch of arbitrary thought energy blobs. 
we become a bit more open to the possibility, maybe, 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 that there's something else, a greater intelligence possibly, an inner guidance that's accessible to us all in any moment. When we do start getting curious about the nature of our experience and how it's created and what that all means, and we stop holding on so tightly to how we think that it all works, this gives us room in our mind for a fresh thought, which is insight. So when our brain is not already full of what we think is going on and our preconceived ideas and all of that kind of stuff, when we let go of that and hold it a lot more lightly, then that leaves room for the fresh stuff to come in. So then we may notice that we start having insights and we get a feel for that fresh, oh, moment. (laughs) That feeling of insight. All the stuff that we've talked about so far on the podcast, like where our experience comes from, the nature of thought, the simple guidance of feelings, how we're all peaceful at core. So all of that stuff that we've already talked about will only be impactful for you if you have a fresh thought about it. Like if you see something for yourself in the stuff that I'm sharing. It's all very well me telling you that your bad feelings are only letting you know that your thinking is sped up and untrustworthy, for example. But until you see something about that for yourself, it's not going to help you in a deep and lasting way. At this point, if you're like, what? I haven't had fresh thought throughout this whole podcast. I don't really understand what you're talking about. (laughs) That's quite perfect. And don't you worry about it. Just keep hanging out. Okay, so back to how insights actually help us. When we have insights, specifically, I guess, into the nature of thought and feeling, our experience of anxiety and worry, stress and overwhelm and all that mental noise, it completely changes. Maybe it changes very gradually and maybe suddenly. Who knows? And that doesn't matter. But when anxiety or stress or worry or overwhelm look completely different, they look like a coat rack instead of an intruder, everything changes. Let me tell you about the first insight I had that started to unravel things for me. Unravel in a good way. It wasn't my first ever insight, of course. I've been having insights all my life, but just not realising how fucking cool they were, okay? I'd spent most of my life just consumed by anxiety and insecurity and self-doubt and just this constant feeling of impending doom. This kept me really rather stuck in life, or so it seemed at the time. Although looking back, I can kind of see that I was guided, but I just overrode it because I thought I needed to mess about with the content of my own thoughts like we all do. If you're following along, you'll recall that the heavy shit feelings I just mentioned, like anxiety and insecurity and self-doubt, are all the same thing, really. It's my clever, perfect, inbuilt notification system called Feelings, letting me know that I was experiencing a ton of thought and taking it very seriously. But it didn't look that way at the time. I thought I was completely fucked up, unworthy of being on the planet, and my life was a mess. I had an eating disorder which I tried to manage with alcohol and drugs. Tip to anyone considering doing this, don't bother. (laughs) It makes everything worse and it's very expensive. If you told me back then that I was perfectly peaceful at my core, I would have thought that you were a hippie bullshitter trying to sell me something or I would have burst into tears and ran away probably to get some cocaine or something. I was just kind of starting to bump into this new paradigm of the true nature of humans and life that I'm talking about on the show, the inside out experience of life, our inescapable innate well-being and the nature of thoughts and feelings and all that cool stuff. So this was through Dr. Amy Johnson, who I've already mentioned on another episode. I totally fangirl over her all the time. She really is awesome. She'd been talking about how our minds are designed to settle on their own how just like um, when we have a cut and our body heals itself, our mind kind of heals itself back to peace. What utter crap, I thought. (laughs) How is this possible, I thought, when I've been feeling so terrible and utterly worthless for 20 years? That's what I thought that day. But later that day, 
I noticed how I wasn't feeling as bad as I had been that morning, but nothing had changed in my life to account for feeling a bit better, right? It doesn't sound like much now, me telling you, and that's because our insights are completely bespoke and personalised for us. And the cool shit is in the feeling of them, that, oh, moment, not in the words themselves, which makes explaining them or sharing them like telling someone about your dream last night. They may like nod politely, but they can't know how awesome your dream or your insight was because it's all in the feeling. Anyway, this insight was enormous for me, particularly because it had double impact. I realised that, oh, hey, yes, it looks like our minds do settle on their own. Well, that's very good to know. And that kind of flips things on its head for me. But not only that, I also realised that I just experienced the power of insight itself. Well, I wouldn't have said it like that back then. I wouldn't have really had language for it. And I barely do now. (laughs) But I realised that my mind must have always been settling my whole life. But I never noticed until just that afternoon, right? Which meant the way that I saw the world wasn't the full picture. It wasn't true. And there was more to see if I was open to seeing it. If my mind had always been settling, but I only just noticed it at 30 odd, what else was there? Having these brand new thoughts was the beginning of the end of my issues around food and drugs and alcohol and chronic worry and overwhelm and anxiety. Which is to say, it was the beginning of the end of my misunderstanding about the nature of thoughts and the drugs, food, alcohol, overwhelm and anxiety were just a symptom of that misunderstanding. I sometimes talk about activating insight with my clients, like how um, we're supposed to activate seeds (laughs) for maximum nutrition or something. I don't know, is that still a thing? I've never actually done it in my life. But activating isn't really the right word for insight because that suggests that it's not working until it's activated and that's not true because it's already doing its cool thing we just don't really notice or realize how cool it is until we do so if you can think of a better way of talking about this and I'd love to hear it because mine obviously is rubbish um, but I'll keep it for now just to finish this point so my job as a coach is the activator but my clients and every human on earth already have everything they possibly need already So you absolutely do not need a coach for this, by the way. Just hanging around in this type of conversation can do a lot. So you can activate yourself by knowing that you've got insight and coming to trust that it's an innate and infinite capacity for lots of fresh thinking, for new realisations and perspectives and understanding, just kind of like what I described in my experience of my first insight, kind of. (laughs) You can activate yourself by making room for all of this fresh thought by dropping what you think you know about, well, everything, I guess, starting over. And then once you spot the insights, don't shoo them away. Embrace them. I said that we've been experiencing insight all of our lives, but many of us have just been shooing them away in favour of logic or reason or any other already formed framework of thinking. Welcome them in. Okay, so if insight is the cool thing that can help us have a completely transformational experience when it comes to our anxiety and stress and overwhelm and all the stuff that I talk about, how can we get more of it? Well, insights are effortless, but also completely unpredictable. They can occur to you in any moment about anything. Us humans can't make an insight happen. But looking away from the so-called problem or giving up on trying to solve it really seems to help in a weirdly paradoxical way. That's why you don't need to figure out or even understand what I'm saying here. But of course, that's going to be unacceptable to a human brain, which loves things figured out. So do you remember our friend Anxious Alice from previous episodes? Well, she doesn't like us calling her Anxious Alice anymore because she's starting to see that she doesn't have anxiety. 
she is seeing a little more about anxiety being her clue that she has a very busy mind. She's still experiencing anxiety and she doesn't think she understands this whole thing that we're talking about and she definitely doesn't know what I mean by new paradigm. But it's starting to look impersonal to her. Sometimes, anyway, a little bit. And sometimes it looks very personal and that her anxiety is definitely a thing to be solved. So can you see your kind of fluctuating experience of that too? Now, all of that is just fine. I explained that I was going to keep calling her Anxious Alice for illustration purposes only. And we know that Alice is not defined by the fleeting experience of a busy mind that we are calling anxiety. And I think she was okay with that. So back to it. What does Anxious Alice think about insight? So when she's exploring this with us, she's more or less on board. She's a bit intrigued. She can see that she's had insights in the past without really knowing they were insight at the time. And that's okay. You don't need to know to get the power of them. Alice thinks that she's had an insight into her anxiety recently. She noticed the variation in the intensity of her anxiety over a day. She saw how she was really anxious on Tuesday morning. She felt kind of sweaty and lightheaded and couldn't really concentrate. Then she noticed how she felt okay in the afternoon, which kind of took her by surprise when she noticed that. She felt anxious again in the car on her way home. And she noticed that she was thinking about work and thinking about possible redundancies that might happen in the future, even though there hadn't been anything said about this at the office. It was a few little, oh, moments for Alice, like a few little pings just noticing these different things. It didn't change her life, she wants us to know, but it did open her up a bit. She was starting to see how anxiety came and went and came and went, even when the circumstances were the same. And she noticed for the first time that she was anxious outside of work in the car because she was thinking about work. This has started to poke a little hole in what Anxious Alice thinks she knows about anxiety and where her anxiety is coming from. It's coming and going and changing when nothing out there, as in the world, is changing. This is really curious to Alice. So what I'd love you to consider from this episode and possibly notice in your own world is your innate capacity for fresh thought. Always but especially when you don't assume that you know how something works or how things should go. So if you think of this in context of something that you want to be different in your life, like what if your anxiety is just not what it appears to be? What if your thoughts truly are nothing to do with you? And what if maybe you are perfectly peaceful by nature? And what if you are guided by some cool universal intelligence? And what if your feelings are only telling you about a lot of thinking in the moment and nothing else? Like what if there's something to all of this stuff that we've been talking about? So I invite you to just temporarily, if you want, just let go of what you think you know about how the human experience works, where your anxiety comes from, where overwhelm comes from and all of that. Just let it go and make some space for some fresh thought and who knows what you might see. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you for staying right till the end. You rock. Thank you so much for listening. This is the part where I ask you to share, review and subscribe to the show. So if you go and do that, I would absolutely love it. If you have thoughts or questions or insights about this episode or anything really, come and share them with me on Instagram at Siobhan Freel or visit me at SiobhanFreel.com. See you next time.